a day away if they're not at the view, at least in our area. So, we worked pretty, pretty diligently at this yesterday. I think probably start to finish, shoe out and everything and shoe back in. We probably could have done it in six hours if we had to park. Next time I would take that chopper off, that would have been easier. But, uh, you know, we didn't. So there's a couple things that I was gonna do, uh, I was gonna do a video while we were doing it, but, you know, I just, unless you have someone standing there holding the camera, it's hard to do this. But when you go to put them back in, you'll see the, the gray here. You wanna put duct tape on those rubbers, hold them in, even a little bit of Gojo or something helps it slide in. I'm not too sure the science of these, but when you uh, you torque them up, you wanna, we torque them up when the, the pan is in, in, at dead center. So if that makes a huge difference or not, it used to make a difference on some of the older combines we had. You had to time that as good as you can. So we took a straight edge and measured that travel distance and got it as close to center as we could. Got the torque specs from John Deere, torqued everything down, and it seems to be, knock on wood, seems to be shaken. All right, well, not even afternoon yet. It is 11.30 though. Up here unloading Carl. Baler man is doing a little bailing. This was that brown oats. I'm pretty sure that's a scam. They were like light. They did yield pretty good, but I we got all mixed up. I didn't put in a mark where we stopped from brown oats to morgan oats, so it actually got mixed up in a truck anyways. So we're not even gonna be able to do any research on it this year. I wanted to do some feed tests for oats like that grown up here. Of course, I do know some other guys that grew them, so I can just get the oats from them. That'll be all right. We got that little bin over there full. This is the first dump into this 10,000. So we are going to, I don't know what's gonna hold. We were trying to debate that. So the ones beside it are 10,000. And these are the same size bin, but on a steel floor. So do you get another six, seven, 800 bushels out of that steel floor? Or what do you get? You get something for sure. But uh, Corey ran over north of town. Oh, this guy's gonna run me over. She ran over north of town because that's, uh, that's the last field over there. And it is also, oh, mother didn't finish here yesterday. She just filled up all the trucks. And it was like eight o'clock by that time already, which you no know, typically isn't late for harvest. We usually, you know, in a bad year, we'll try to run as many hours as we can. But in a nice year like this, we take her easy. We were all so tired from putting that shoe in. My legs were sore from being in the back of that combine or in the belly of it, I guess. Uh, all contorted up in there. I was actually starting to get mildly irritated and, and itchy and just uh, experienced some discomfort from having all of that like 10 year old grain dust that's caught up in the combines, you know, falling down on your head because you're finally in there. I also learned a little bit about combines while I was in there. And one thing I don't understand is how could anybody actually be like seriously be a seed grower? You know, there was stuff crammed up in the in, inside of that combine. It, I mean, wasn't, you know, that was from 600 acres ago. So you never get that clean. I guess they need good seed cleaners. So we are gonna hopefully haul with Carl from north of town. Those little trucks just won't keep up on oats. So what we'll do, that's the way we run this operation. If we're close to home, like right here, you know, we'll haul with the little trucks. In fact, right here, we will just set the Super V up over the auger and they or whatever they dump right in there. But if we're close to home within a mile or two, we try to haul with the little trucks and use this as just a surge bin in the field. And then if we're farther away, we use the little trucks as a surge bins and use the big truck to haul back and forth. <clears throat> also takes some planning to make sure you're set up into a big bin with this big red auger because it's got the electric hydraulic rem or remote swing. So you don't have to try to kick that heavy thing under there. You can almost, you can do it yourself from the truck. Um, the yellow augers, you gotta kick them. But, uh, should be okay. I think I should get about five loads into here. Four anyways, four big loads. So this will be the first one and 
three more from over there and that should pretty much pretty much finish off that quarter i think it's 140 acres well good afternoon so we have uh we have forged our way north of town again so that's our barley field right across the road this is the first year we've ever farmed this quarter uh and we put oats on it it'd been fescue for oh four or five years i think it was extremely hard and like sod bound tried to plow it i didn't try to plow it i hired someone to plow it so of course <clears throat> they did a really good job rollover plow no dead furrows but uh, it's unbelievable like the chunks and stuff that were left behind so we dissed it twice last fall then we dissed it again this spring and cultivated it but it still came up it was so the, the ground came up rough still it's just unbelievable how rough that was guy should have drug a float around is what i should have done but i didn't uh didn't get that ambitious so i don't know if you can see it's like you know quite white and then there's a strip that's not as white and then white it's, it's very uneven however believe it or not so yet again I, I gotta say this every time in case there's a new guy watching and they right away are like oh that's garbage that's, he's just lying <laughs> Corey pulled in with her 9750 and she had she's the only one that really knows how to set that monitor so she set it all over to oats and uh she made this pass from the approach there down to the truck and then around and it said like 179 the whole time she was going down and back bushels and about 12.9 moisture so we don't put any stock in the number it's just the fact like the number was really high like we don't normally see that so anyways she she phoned and she said I, well i'm not too sure we were on our way over with the other combine and the header and stuff like that so she said i don't know it could could be tough there's a little bit of green here and there and on and on and on so we got the sample took it back it was in fact 12 6 i think so pretty close to what your monitor said bushels of course i don't know but we've already taken off like three i don't know maybe five thousand bushels i think a super b holds 2800 and then four little trucks so that's another the little the little trucks hold like they hold too much well good morning just unloading carl here we are still north of town combining those oats i don't understand what happened over there but uh it's running very well so we kind of thought it would be fairly nitrogen deficient being in fescue all those years uh it seeded so terribly it came up so uneven um but maybe the fact that some of that oats was seven inches in the ground like covered in dirt maybe maybe that helped it through the heat i don't know running very well like I, I think i said earlier when she pulled into the field it just immediately went from to 170 that's what her monitor said of course we don't know if that's right probably isn't right but the fact is that's the highest number we've seen this year and then uh, i actually took it for a spin made one round yesterday and i got down to the far end of the field and i had to slow right down to like a mile an hour and it said 220 the whole time i was going a lot of times when you go you can reef back on that hydrostat and then your bushels will shoot way up. But I was just crawling along at like a mile and a half an hour and it just read 220. So I don't know, that thing's probably broken, but the oats were still pouring in. We got, uh, this is our third, third truck off of there. And then we, dad and I were hauling with those other two trucks just in between them filling this one. So I don't know what we're gonna get off of there should get 14,000 bushels of oats. It is 140 acres. So we should get that 14,000 bushels. And then uh, a little bit left right here. The other thing I don't understand is, uh, so we we bought the new pieces for that shoe. I'm pretty sure on our 9610, the shoe is one piece, all welded together. This 9750, it looks like that shoe is in about five pieces. The sides, then the big pan, and then a cube braces so anyways we bought the new pieces and we bolted them all together and put them in there and then there was a nut fell off so a couple things i don't know if you're gonna torque a nut and bolt do, do you have to torque the nut 
or can you torque the, the bolt head? Like, I don't know. Because if you torque the bolt head, you're probably getting, you're probably not getting quite all of that to the end. So anyways, there's that. And then you have to recheck them. Like tires. You, you torque your tires and then they say recheck them after 100 kilometers. You have to recheck shoe bolts. I would think it's a very similar to a tire. It's stopping and going. And in fact, the shoe is probably worse because it's going forward and back and forward and back. So anyways, yesterday we did recheck them. We retorqued them all up. Uh, in Dad and I's experience, when you start to have trouble with your shoe, be it that it's cracking or you're losing bolts or breaking, uh, she's generally a, a major. Like you got it, there's a there's something wrong in the system that is allowing for that to happen. Well, 10 after two. And the ladies are moved to the farthest south part of the field here from this lease road over. They said it was about eight rounds. So <clears throat> I'm not sure what that equates to in truck. Like what, 16 acres maybe. So we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. I know they got a little bit of room left in Carl. His dad and I have been trying to keep up with the little trucks. They're a little easier to unload. So. Crazy oat crop though. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought it would have done this, but. Lucky, I guess. So where you're sometimes not, uh, not 100% on maybe the wheat yield or the barley yield or the, probably the canola yield. All of a sudden you makes up with the, the oat. for them to finish up here I just pulled some of this uh, oats out of the ground like that's incredibly deep what do we got here so the length of my finger is how <laughs> how deep that was I'd say you know it's all five inches in the ground unbelievable all over like that So this was ground that we had worked about five times to try to beat up some of these clumps, all this uh, sod bound fescue. And it left the ground so mellow that we, uh, you, you had no depth control whatsoever. So we just, uh, we just ran with it, called her good. And you know what, of all the years where a guy's gonna get lucky, big, big horseshoe. I think this was the year because it came up and it must have had set roots so deep that uh, I don't know, it was able to take the heat and everything. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It makes like a huge, like loose your foot down in there. Crazy. Haha, <laughs> wow. What do we got here? Five after six. Everything's back home. We just went and got Carl, so he's loaded. Um, nice to see the gauges up, meaning you can get a legal load of oats. We were hearing, oh, the header trailer there. We were hearing the low bushel weight. So, well, I don't think ours is uh, as high as it sometimes is. We did get 47 on the oats on at least this part so we did grow some of those stupid brown oats and i'm pretty sure that's a scam i think i already said this i don't know i don't know what i covered it's been a long two days so we don't uh 
I don't expect that we'll be doing that again. Um, we are gonna send, I put them in that little tiny bin over there. We are gonna send them out sample because everyone's like, oh no, it's the feed value. It's this, that, the next thing. Well, I don't know. They weighed 32 pounds. It was total junk. They did yield, but then we got over here. So from here to, I don't know, somewhere we're around shoes right now, was all just Morgan oats. That's normally what we grow. And uh, geez, when we got over there, we didn't even really worry about throw over. They were yielding like 140, I think. And uh, heavy, like 47 pounds. So that's a win. Of course, you don't know either, right? Like once these guys, get a hold of it maybe our bushel weight isn't usually it's a fairly conservative one because we don't clean nothing out we just dump it in that stupid cup the straws and everything so hopefully 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 what does she got here i better unload this truck oh yeah you might notice that that uh that gem isn't moving again so it had a shoe replacement and we did the bolts and then we retorked them yesterday and that all ran all good today she finished the oats north of town she made it back here she went down and came back header won't go up so she climbed out and yeah blew a big like a big hose like an inch and a half or whatever it is inch so there's uh some dust control for the field i suppose if you want to look at it any other way but sad and then of course what it is five six o'clock here on sunday night so there's gonna be no getting a hose i think dad took it off and he was gonna go see if he had one sometimes we have one but mother's gonna have to chew away until she doesn't want to see how she can uh it's unfortunate for her in that combine because they've been doing uh, the bulk of the work here and apparently dumping it right in the cab of the truck. So that's fun. Fun for the grain hauler guy. You get to be miserable all day, every day. Oh, take a little more, but. So this is one thing I'm finding a little bit interesting and you're not sure if it's just because of the dirt quality or whatever, but north of town, I could reach down, grab a handful of oats and pull them out and you had all that root. That's all you get here. It's just, it doesn't, the ground's hard. So now, in my eyes, if it's gonna be dry like this, everyone's, oh, you can't work the land, you're gonna dry it out. I'd work the ever living, I'd work it five, six times, work it so it's 10 inches of mellow dirt, seed about eight inches deep, and then uh, color good because those oats definitely ran better than these. Also, check that out for that T9505. PLM junk. What a hunk of junk. Oh, my ride's here.